Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of Mobile CW Amateur Radio Station W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor. I'm sitting in my driveway right now, tuned to 24.89831 megahertz. Uh, with the transmatch, as you can see here, um, on the tuned antenna coax one, that is tuned through to the whip antenna on the bed of my truck here, big number eight, the eight foot whip. That is a tuned antenna. Th this particular tuned antenna beat the um, ATAS active tuning antenna system a little earlier today. Uh, in a head-to-head -head contest with a, trying to get a EW to respond to my call, EW being Belarus, used to be called the White Russian Soviet Socialist Republic, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's uh, an ex-satellite country of uh, Russia. My tuned antenna beat the ATAS. Now, right now, they're both tuned... Uh, for this uh, particular frequency, uh, you can tell that by just sending a little test uh, signal here. Note the forward power of 30 watts, about 1 watt reflected. We're on the ATAS right now, direct. Now tuned to the whip. And once again... Well, not quite as good, but flat for all intents and porpoises. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens. <clears throat> now, note the noise level here, S5. It says S5 on the whip. About the same, S6, S3, S6, S5. About the same here. The uh, noise that's received can sometimes be an indicator of how well the antenna is matched or how well it's going to perform on transmit. And I say sometimes. Now here's 15 meters. Now we've got to retune the ATAS now. And in order to do that, I hit this tune button. Watch the, watch the SWR. That's kind of neat. See how it goes down? Now it's tuned. Uh, we're getting an S8, S7, S7 noise level here. Now we've got to go to coax one tuned. And in order to tune this antenna, I've got to look up the preliminary settings. 21.025, 269 for the inductor. And for the capacitor, it says 85. Let's see how that shows up on the SWR. Let's get away from these people. I don't want to be interfering with anyone. One to one, perfectly flat. The noise level here registering S6, S4, S6, S7. See it fluctuating there. Now let's go to the direct ATAS. Oh, about the same noise level. Now I have not conducted a head-to-head -head contest between these two antennas on this band, but I did do it on this band, 30 meters. Now we've got to retune it, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if I can do this without getting in the way of the meter for you. It'll take a little longer now to find its setting because the frequency is a much greater departure. It may take up to 30, 40 seconds in some cases. There we go, we got a match.
Note the noise level, about S8. Good steady S8. Now we'll go over to coax one tuned and on 10.120, that's the frequency I set it up for originally, 273 for the inductor. And 74 for the capacitor. The noise level is much weaker. Look, S1, S2, S4. Notice I had to tune the capacitor just a little bit different there. It's up to 78 now. Those are just preliminary settings. But notice the noise level now, S1, S2. Now this is the band on which the ATAS, which we're now connected to again directly, greatly outperformed my whip. So remember, um, coax 2 is the ATAS. There's no need to tune it. It tunes itself, so we would never use this position down here. As for 10 meters, though, we can go directly on either one of them. Let's go up to 10 meters. And uh, go directly to coax 1. Oh, there's activity! There's a lot of activity. Flat, 1 to 1 SWR. Now we go to coax 2 and we got to tune it again. And, and once again, <clears throat> it's going to take probably quite a while now. Uh, the sleeve on that ATAS was about 8 inches above the base on 10 megahertz. It'll go down to within an inch or so on this band. It's down to about 2 inches. There we go. It's down to about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Now we'll test it again. Now I can't imagine how this ATAS is going to outperform my whip on this band because this whip on this band is one quarter wavelength naturally resonant. S6, S7 noise on the ATAS S7, S8 on the whip. Well, those are just some experiments comparing these two antennas. There's no definitive evidence, though, until you actually test it in a QSO with someone and find out for certain which one works better, and ideally more than one QSO. The problem is with DX, when you work in DX, They'll just come right back to you and say 5NN, and that's it. And it's over. 5NN. Five five... Oh, the iPad slipped. Well, the experiment is over anyway. You know I have this iPad mounted on here on a yardstick jammed down into the seat. Taped up to that yardstick. <laughs> so that it'll stay at the displays there for you. Now you talk about, you talk about contraptions, you talk about contortions. I am the absolute master of contortion. Believe me, trust me. Stan Jabalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, signing off, saying 73, and so long for now.